and I would just go on and continue to do things that I did. I always, like I said, I always doubted that this man could take away what everything that I had done. I'm not going to share a lot of, I have been married before, I'm, and that's where my beautiful kids had come from, but I'm not going to share that today. It's not part of my testimony today. But at the age of 42, I received salvation. I had accepted Christ into my life. I had accepted Christ into my life. I knew I had changed, and I knew that He had taken away all those sins. I didn't have to doubt. I didn't have to. When I got up to leave, I knew that I had been forgiven. Before, I always doubted. I never knew what it felt like to finally be free and not have to question. I hope that I was going to heaven. You hear people say that a lot. They hope they're going there. I didn't have to hope. I knew. I knew. Fell all over me. But I 
I didn't care because I just didn't want to do it. That's how bad I did not want to do this. Because I knew that I was not going to sound like him. And I did not, I, could, I couldn't even, there was just no way. I had not prepared myself enough for what I had to do. That weekend we had came home, and I remember telling that devil that I would never, ever, ever, nobody was ever going to pray for my man again. Amen. Into my pastor. 
I speak life into my husband and into my church and into the leaders of our church. If we are not using what God has given us to speak life into all of these things, what are we doing? It is an insult to Christ when he has brought us out of things. And we go right back into them, ladies. We have to use what he gives us. And when he brings us out and puts us on that valley, we stand on that valley, we stand on that mountain, I'm sorry. When he pulls us out and sets us on that mountain, we stand on that mountain tall and proud. Amen. On that Friday, I can 
can remember them coming in and they was gonna, they told us that they was gonna remove his bin. This would be a hard transition for Dakin. So during this time, Ashley had stayed in there with him. That way he, when he woke up, he would have that familiar face to look at. Because mind you, he had been on life support for several days now. I remember taking my Bible and just walking back and forth and back and forth and just praying, praying for deliverance and praying that when he woke up, that he would know, you know, he would be able to see and feel the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we, that's what we pray. Because we already know that there's an anointing on his life. Mm -hmm. That's why the devil is trying so hard yep. to, to get him, to take him down. Mm -hmm. That all the team of doctors had come in. And I had just, like I said, I was walking back and forth. And the next thing I knew, I felt a nurse touch my shoulders. And she told me that, that it was over, you know, that he had come through it and he had, he had woke up. And I had been laying out in the floor as a gatekeeper for nothing to come in. We did not want anything. We had filled that room. I didn't want a doctor coming in that was not of Christ, you know. I wanted them to feel. And when he woke up, God needed him to know where he was. And he needed him to know that he had been delivered again. He had been delivered again. I'm telling you this today because when we pray for our loved ones, we pray differently because love prays differently, ladies. Mm -hmm. You're going to pray different for your husband. We're going to pray different for our kids. We're going to pray different for our grandkids. Not saying that our brothers and sisters in Christ don't pray with us, but when they're yours, mm -hmm. you pray differently. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Amen. And it was just like what doubting Thomas Thomas doubted until he met and seen that Jesus Christ was standing there right before him. The Bible doesn't tell us whether he placed his hands in, the, in, his, in his hands or in his side. But what it does tell us is that Thomas had the faith when he laid his eyes on Jesus Christ. He had the faith. He knew and he believed. Just like we have to know and we have to believe and we can't doubt what our Savior can do for us and our Savior can do for our families. I'm going to say it again and I'm going to ask you this. My grandson today is Still, he's homeless, he's in full addiction, but I want you to take your notebooks out and I want you to grab your pen and I want you, I'm asking you to write down Dakin Caldwell's name. And I want you, every single time that you look at this name, that you look at that book, I am begging you to please, please, Pray for deliverance because one day I speak life into my grandson Amen. and one day he's going to be standing right here before you giving a testimony Praise God, beloved. Woo! Oh, Pastor, praise God.